Today I'm going to take you through the sheep hearts dissection. You'll notice that I have my PPE on, my gloves, my apron, and my goggles. I'm going to orient myself with the heart here. Remember with the orientation, you want to act as though the heart would be in your body. So in this case, this is the right side of the heart and this is the left side. I know that this is the front or the anterior side because I can see some of the different coronary uh, blood vessels here and also some of the coronary sinuses. And then on the back, the posterior side, it looks a lot different. And you if I look up top here, I can see that this is going to be the pulmonary trunk here. These two branches here will lead me to the aorta. This is the brachiocephalic or the left branch. Back here, this is going to be the superior vena cava. And then if I look all the way back over here, I will be able to see the pulmonary vein coming in. The heart also has these little pieces, and these are called the oracles, and that means ear. So the little flaps right here are the oracles. When you are ready to start cutting, you want to use your scalpel, and a sharp blade will be best because it will prevent cuts to yourself, so you won't have to kind of saw. You want to cut superficially first and just make a line on each side, and then you can cut through more but it's always better to cut a little bit a little bit less deep than it is to cut through everything. I've already made the cut. So when you open up the heart here, you can see that we have the right side of the heart. We have the right atrium. We will have the tricuspid valve. Here's the septum. This is the left side of the heart. We have the left atrium up top. It's behind here. We have the bicuspid or the mitral valve. These are the chordae tendinae or the heart strings and when we tug on these, these would actually close the valve. And remember the valves prevent the backflow of blood from the ventricle to the atrium. Here we have the left ventricle. You'll notice how much larger or how much bigger the muscle is on the left side than on the right side here because the left side of the heart has to be able to withstand more blood pressure. If I'm looking here more on the back side or the posterior of the heart, I'm looking at the inferior vena cava. If I were to insert my needle tool through here, it would go right up here into the right atrium and you can see how small the right atrium is. A lot of times when we look at the diagrams, the right atrium looks large but it's not. If I trace the blood, the blood would go through here and it's kind of cut off on this side. You can see more at the top but this would be the tricuspid valve. The blood would flow through here, and remember that it's deoxygenated blood at this, at this point, and it would come into the right ventricle. And if I were to put my needle tool here, it will come out of the heart through the pulmonary artery, and that will go to the lungs. You can see here that the needle is pointing to the right ventricle, and if I were to trace that needle back up through the heart, then we would see the needle coming back out through the pulmonary artery going away from the heart and that's going to go to the lungs where the blood will become oxygenated. I'm now here on the posterior side of the heart and I'm looking at where the pulmonary vein will bring the blood back to the heart with oxygen in it. Again I'm tracing the path of blood back into the heart. It came into the heart through the pulmonary vein it's now oxygenated and it will come into the left atrium. It's going to go here through the bicuspid valve and you can see the heart strings here, also known as the mitral valve. It will go back down into the left ventricle and then it's going to go out of the body through the aorta. The blood moves from the left ventricle out through the aortic valve, then out through the aorta. It will move into the body through one of these two branches, carrying oxygen to the different body tissues.